When I came to Safe and Sound, I needed help with being a parent. I needed help with learning how to be a co-parent. I needed help with being able to communicate and problem solve with my son. I, I don't know words, it was that welcoming. Um, the help was quick. Everything I listed, they started making phone calls, making it happen, telling me about programs, getting me signed up, using their codes so I could do these programs for free. In 2018, San Francisco is uh, more than any other city in the country, uh, I believe, a city of haves and have-nots. Uh, and it's become increasingly that over the last half decade or more with the tech boom, with the increase in, in housing prices, both owner and, and rental, um, we just see a lot fewer families being able to survive in the city. Most significantly what we see is, is isolation, social isolation. Um, friends, uh, community members, extended family members moving out of the city uh, to, to areas of the state or, or elsewhere uh, that are more affordable. Uh, very often, very low-income families don't even have that option, and so they remain here um, uh, very often with, with a very uh, limited support structure. These are vulnerable families. No one wants to be in this situation. I don't think um, in my 20-plus years that I've been doing this, I don't think I've ever have encountered a parent who does not want the best for their children. Sometimes stressors are some too much for one person to handle. Families who are in crisis, uh, or families who are having some, some difficulties parenting or, or handling their kids, tend not to go to the Child Protective Service Agency for help, right? Um, there's sort of a natural tendency, I'm not gonna go to the agency that may remove my child if, if they see something that's wrong. Uh, they wanna go to an environment that, that feels um, safe, that feels supportive that may have uh, uh, caseworkers and, and staff who look like them, um, who speak like them. At Safe and Sound, our work is focused on how do we prevent child abuse and reduce its devastating impact. And, and, and our work is truly focused on how are we going to protect the child. But the only way to do that is by strengthening the family around them, to understand what the generations and families in that family and that child's life is. And in order to strengthen the family, we need to strengthen the entire community and the entire system. The Department of Human Services was, was funding family support programs. Um, First Five San Francisco was finding family type support programs and then so was our department, the Department of Children, Youth and Families. And what we realized was that we were finding some of the programs that were similar and some of the activities that were similar and but nothing to, to the, the extent that it would be needed to make a real impact for families. So several years ago, these agencies came together and said, we can do something better for, for our community. We can pool our resources and we can leverage them and leverage the expertise of each of our agencies. And we can ensure that we're funding 26 family resource centers that are in every community in our city. It's incredible. Every community, every population is supported and has a place where families can go in order to get all the prevention services that they need. That's key to being successful, is really partnering. You have to be able to, to think outside of your organization, outside of your silo, so to speak, to really think about what it is that the community needs. Because families are not siloed. Families have multiple needs. They are what they say they are. They're family resource centers. Families can walk in, they can get a service in any community here in San Francisco, in their language, with somebody who most likely reflects their experience or understands their experience and helps navigate them to either providing direct services or helps navigate them to services that can potentially um, help that family move forward in a really intensely challenging environment. At the end of the day, it is within our community that we feel supported. And so that's why Family Resource Centers are so vital to be in each one of these communities across the city. You can come to Safe and Sound to just talk. If you're having problems with your child, if you're having problems with 
uh, the other parent, or if you're just having problems with yourself. You can come to Safe and Sound and have a free dinner on Tuesday if you don't want to cook and let your child play with all the other kids. I'm really happy when I'm here and I'm thankful and grateful. And uh, if I need, to, you know, if I need to talk to somebody because I'm going through some stuff in the morning, I just come here and who's ever on duty, you could just, you know, talk about stuff. I think what we have come to understand more is it is not about the system giving something to somebody and saying, okay, now you're better. We have begun to understand that it's about the system listening to someone and being able to provide and helping them become more efficacious and taking care of themselves, their family, and their community. The family resource centers are just a great example of that. Well, it's important to have all hands on deck. You know, these are complicated um, social problems. Uh, its health disparities are connected to educational disparities, which are connected to economic disparities. Um, these are, there's an intersection, this intersectionality. And so we need government, we need philanthropy, for sure we need philanthropy, um, and we also need business. Uh, the business community also has been um, very key in San Francisco. Uh, my clinical care coordinator helped find a housing solution company here in the city. Um, I now have subsidy, all because of this place. Found a place for me, connected me there, and now that place is giving me subsidy. So I don't have to pay $3,000 a month anymore and take care of a kid. You have to figure out what a family needs and meet them there. Uh, families and children they need to be the center of the solution. And um, the primary school, um, uh, you know, lot, any of the great programs in San Francisco, we can't come in saying we know the answer. We need to make the space for the family to design and implement the pathway to success. We have data that says that we're making a difference but we also have data that shows where we need to improve. And so, yes, it feels good. Yes, we have more to do. We believe that um, helping a young person succeed is a win-win, win-win. So if a young person succeeds, their family will succeed. If their family succeeds, the community will succeed. And if the community succeeds, the city succeeds. Hope is really what we hold out for our families. Um, hope is a vision of where they would like to be in the future. You know, that's exactly what we're all about. What's the pathway to hope, to success, to a, a bright and healthy future? I don't know where I would be without this place um, in terms of being a parent, um, how I treat my son, how I treat his mother, um, and how I treat myself. We actually find our work incredibly joyful. Um, it's one of our main values, is joy. It's really hard work, but the work that we're doing is about helping families be able to raise their kids and um, helping families become strong and achieve all that they wanted to achieve. Without hope, then what do you have? You know, you, you want to believe that things can change. And the only way they're going to change if you get the help and be around people. That's the only way.